do you guys have any questions from your audience you guys want to ask maybe in the comments um, i had one good one from trader xo he asked about um you want to ask about the dropping dollar uh, due to qe and low rates but the euro and the ecb won't be pleased with a higher euro dollar when they're trying to stimulate the euro economy and need a, and need a lower euro so what's our take on that that's what he was asking. Pretty, pretty in-depth question, but a good one. So could you rephrase right. that? I'll repeat that again. So he says that we talk about the dollar dropping due to quantitative easing and low rates, but the Euro and the ECB, they're not really going to be pleased with that because of higher Euro dollar. So when they're trying to stimulate the Euro economy, uh, they need an actual lower Euro. So he wanted to know like what our take was on that. Um, I don't know if it was a well asked question in that way, yeah. but Okay. Yeah, what's going on with quantitative of... easing on the euro? I don't know. Like, what's I? I'm, I don't follow the European market. Me either, because I, I eat freedom fries. So here's a here's an idea. So in crypto, we all sort of operate with the underlying, you know, thing under our skin that the governments are going to wake up one day and hate crypto and ban it. I got a different idea with this whole idea about race to the bottom. If you have to devalue the dollar, okay, yeah, maybe you could do it against, you know, sterling or yen a little, but the major devaluation of the dollar that they're going to want is versus crypto and versus commodities, right? They're going to want commodities and crypto up, dollar down, all fiat down. Yeah. Okay. So I think that that's the, the government would actually prefer the dollar devaluation be done in crypto. Well, they're talking about a new Bretton Woods and basically you're better off having commodities at this time because all they may, they may form some type of union together where all countries devalue their fiat. Oh, this is time. Crazy. And unless you have, unless you have some commodities, <laughs> you're kind of screwed. Right. I mean, it's already happening. I'm, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Oh, God. This okay. is the scary. This, this is the scary stuff. This is what I don't like talking about. Well, I like doing videos on it, but I don't. All right. Well, it, <laughs> it, it's simple. Like Brent, Crazy. this is oil. Brent breaking yeah. out, right? Green mm -hmm. candle. Okay. CRB index. This is grains and metals breaking out, right? Yeah. Look at the give up trade in March in commodities. Wow. Okay. Give up and then the other way. Uh, soybeans. This is food in Asia. Okay, this looks like an looks old like a crypto corn. chart. Yeah, yeah. Hey, do, hey, do you guys <laughs> here's remember copper? When... Here's uh, look, 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 you know, d copper. It's like yeah. the dollar devaluation is happening against physical assets, and I, I have absolute and I have absolutely no idea why everyone's given up on gold. Every day, hey, I, yeah, see I, think, I think gold's a great. Investment. I mean, I, I get it. I get it that Bitcoin yeah. could go up a lot, right? I, I get it, but. Giving up on gold, I mean, hmm. gold could 10x next year. Yeah, absolutely. You see, so I, I would not fault anyone. 13, Did you guys see that? Like, rhodium yeah. went from like, I think, was like a thousand to 13,000 in a week, like 13x in a week. Uh, <laughs> <subscribers>. <laughs> you don't see that ever in, in like, like metals, but it was pretty amazing to watch. Right. So that's where they want the dollar devaluation. It, I mean, it is, yeah. it is happening right now. Do you guys so remember I'm, when, do you guys remember when oil was negative? I know. Yeah. yeah. That oh, was yeah. crazy. Tom said, Tom <laughs> said insane. Bitcoin, oil went to dude. zero, but Bitcoin did. It went to negative. It went to negative it like $3 negative. or something. It was insane. Right. I really like that. Too. You had to pay somebody, you you pay somebody $33 yeah. a barrel to take your oil. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of <laughs> curious if when all these countries devalue their fiat, if we see like Bulgaria become one of the new richest countries because they seized a whole bunch of Bitcoin back. No, didn't the they? I thought they sold it. I thought they sold it all to pay off their debts. I don't, I'm not sure. I think they did. That was the story. So they, they, they. A Bulgarian always pays up its debts. Hey, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For, well, hey, well, they the had it one time. Venezuela was... could turn around because the uh, Venezuelan consumer that knows how to mine his own crypto. Yeah. Could be a lot of, could be a lot of suddenly wealthy people in that country, believe it or not. So it was like with, with Bulgaria, they, they got a bunch of money from organized crime. And I think they used it to pay off like 25% of their national debt or something like that. It was crazy. If they would have held it, they could have paid off 100%. But uh, I, yeah, I think, that, I think that the thing about, you know, thinking of the governments, like what, what our government is going to do in the future is very interesting. I would be, I would give anything to know how much Bitcoin our government has set aside. 
You know, we know they had a ton from Silk Road. Uh, they still have a lot of that. Um, and I would be very curious to see because, uh, you know, I, I think that's one thing people aren't really thinking about, which is if we do lose the reserve currency, if our government in the United States had a bunch of Bitcoin, then, you know, they might push to make that reserve currency possibly, you know, if what not the SDR. Bitcoin the Bitcoin standard, standard instead of a gold standard. How cool would that be? That would be cool. Well, see, that's the thing that I, I did a video on that it. because it's very interesting. A lot of people don't think about that. Like. I, for a long time, was like, Bitcoin will never be the reserve currency because I was taking it from the perspective of, like, governments aren't just going to be like, let's go with Bitcoin. But, like, what if Bitcoin became the standard to base value on? Then it's not really like, you know, it's not it's not at one country owning, you know, owning the reserve currency. It's about. The only, the only then, thing I would that just I thought about that was before they made gold, the gold standard. They had like, uh, I forget what law it was, where basically you had to give up your gold or else you went to prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. right after the stock market crash, I think, in 1929, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's that, that's very interesting stuff. And I, I've actually done a, uh, a series on my channel uh, called The Great Reset. We got part five, the last one coming out on Wednesday, because that's the really scary stuff when they're talking about the World Economic Forum. There's a blog that they put out a few years ago that's just like terrifying. They're like... Well, I used to think I wanted privacy, but now I've totally decided, like they're giving the perspective of like a, a girl living in the future. And then she's like, you know, I used to think I really value privacy, but now that I have absolutely none, I've decided I don't even like privacy. And it's just like such scary stuff coming from there. And where they're talking about the great reset and wanting like get rid of meritocracy, it's basically communism and socialism, which if that ever happens, America has to be the chess piece to fall for the rest of the world to, to go that way. So that's kind of what, you know, I think some people are pushing for. It's like Bitcoin's our last our last holdout. But but speak, speaking of last holdouts, I want to ask a question came from my audience, which is what are our thoughts on privacy coins? Nobody's mentioned them in a long time. Mm -hmm. oh. Remember the, like the privacy coin run where there was like... Uh, yeah, they were pumping every month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think privacy coins will always have a use case, but governments yeah. are trying to ban them. They're going after them hard. Exchanges yeah, are yeah I said them. it in 2017. I, I got a lot of flack in 2017 because I was probably the only person that was saying like, yeah, these guys are going to probably not do well long term because the first thing that governments are going to go after is privacy coins because mm -hmm. you can do stuff they don't know about and you can hide it. And I mean, then you saw what happened with Monero and them basically paying a fee to, I think, was it... Um, who was it that actually just Do you cracked? think they actually cracked it? Or no, no? no, no, no. They have. Well, they're trying to put a patent together. I think it's Cypher Trace. Trying yeah, to put a patent Trace. together to. Yeah, those guys that actually it. helped. I think they helped you, Ian. Um, and so, like, these guys do, like, really in depth uh, research and they worked in the FBI and all this stuff. And yeah. they, they're oh, well, rich, trying to right? crack with rich, rich, Yeah, with Rich and them. Right. So, you know, <laughs> the thing is, will they ever crack it? I don't know. Have they cracked it? Maybe. The, the thing is, is, there's always going to be someone trying to crack them. They're, they're going to always have to do work, but I still think people are going to use them. But then you have this new wallet thing where, you know, if, if you use a private wallet and they can track you. And I've been told about this from like two years ago, my friend ran the, one of the people that was in the exchange bx.in.th was the biggest exchange in Asia. And he literally like told me they were going to be doing this. They're going to track all your wallets. They're going to basically say your Bitcoin's no good because you got it from this source and you're not telling them where you're getting it from. So that's like the scarier part. Will it happen? I don't think so personally, but I don't know. Give me your take guys. I think privacy coins have a use case, but maybe they're not going to be around forever. Privacy so coins have a use case because governments are going to use them. Ooh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, Gover interesting thought yeah, bill. Right. In other words, wow. when the, when the Pentagon Ooh. or any of these other big players like that. No. In other words, if we're going to go big brother in some way, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a high level concept, but if we're going big brother, you know, transparency there. in government finances is going to disappear. Right. So privacy coins will be used by governments and what? central and central banks. Right. In other words, yeah. when you say governments, do you mean like for, I guess, what's, what's the word? Black ops? Nefarious uh, actions? Nefarious? Yeah. Well, yeah. black yeah. ops, you know, it, yeah. if, if we're, if we're saying we're funding the military, Espionage. if the military <laughs> budget is this, but the military budget may be a certain amount in dollars and a certain amount in like, say, Bitcoin or Monero or whatever. Yeah. 
that's an interesting thought I've never thought about. But th this is what I would say about privacy coins is I used to be like like dead set against them, like from, from an investment perspective, like, uh, OK, well, like eventually the governments are going to crack down on these. They're going to make it where it's impossible to trade them. And, you know, they're not good investments long term. But the funny thing is, the more we've seen governments try to crack down on them, the higher their value has gone. And, and you just mm -hmm. think about, well, huh, that makes sense. How much do you think an AK-47 is going to be if the government bans assault rifles? You know, like value's going to be up. It's going to be harder to get them. You're going to have to know how, but the value itself is going to be higher. I mean, when you look at a lot of these countries or a lot of these people, you know, that buy them black market guns, I mean, you know, you're not buying them cheaper in a lot of cases. You know, I mean, you're, you're buying them because they don't have a serial number on them. You know what I mean? Um, or or they, they've the, their history has been washed. That's really what you're paying for. And so privacy coins, I would say that's something to consider is that if you're invested in privacy coins big, I don't know if that's a super smart thing unless you are prepared for all of the, you know, things that come along with that. But their individual values, I mean, they might actually, you know, really go up based on clamping down from governments. Right. And you'll also see the word in 2021, you'll, you'll hear the word bail in. Ooh. This happened in Cyprus, in Europe, where they actually just had to go to maintain government solvency. They had to go in everyone's bank account and just take 10%. Right. The day that a progressive or somebody starts that in a G7 country, um, you know, privacy coins or coins with privacy functions. You know, you'll, you'll be you'll be shocked how fast regular coins may attempt to add privacy functions yeah. to their existing. You, now. you 